Solving an energy problem is just like any other physics problem. You first want to think about it conceptually to try to wrap your mind around what in the world is going on here before we start assigning values to it. So when we're dealing with energy, energy problems, we're going to use something called an energy bar graph and flow diagram. It's a visual way to account for the energy involved in some kind of problem or event. This shows how the energy is being stored in a system, depending how you define that system, and it shows any transfers into or out of that system, any energy transfers in or out of that system. There's going to be a, a bar graph on the left which shows the energy at the object has or the system has at some position or some time. The circle in the middle represents our system, and here this is where we're going to show any energy flow out or into the system. And the bar graph on the right is going to show the energy present or stored within the system after some kind of event. From this bar graph, or in conjunction with it, we're going to then write our energy conservation equation. So let's look at some examples just to see how this works. In each of these four examples, we're going to look at the same situation. We have some kind of roller coaster ride where we've got a car with some riders against a compressed spring. We'll call this position A. And its velocity at position A is zero, so it starts from rest. The compressed spring launches this car and it ends up going in a vertical loop. And we're going to look at the energy that the system has, depending how we define the system. Uh, the car has initially at point A and finally at point B. Uh, up here on the top of the loop, it's got a velocity greater than zero, so it's moving and it's above our, which we're going to call a height of zero. So the first thing we want to do is we, we want to define our system. What do we care about? What things are we going to say store energy? So let's define the system as the spring, the cart, or the roller coaster car, and the earth. So just like force diagrams or free body diagrams, we're going to put a dashed line around the thing that we care about, our system. In this case, it's pretty much everything. And in this situation, we're, we're not going to uh, think about the effects of friction. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the spring plus the cart plus the earth in our circle. That circle represents our system and everything inside of it, the things that store energy. So now we're going to look at position A, and we want to ask ourselves, does our system, the spring, the car, and the earth, have energy, any energy stored in it when it's at that time or at that specific position? So the first thing we're going to look at is K. Remember, that stands for kinetic energy. Does our system have kinetic energy? Does the spring or the car or the earth have kinetic energy? Well, remember, anything that's moving has kinetic energy. Uh, doesn't appear that anything is moving. The spring's at rest. The car's at rest. Remember, it's got a velocity of zero. And we're going to assume that the Earth is at rest. And so there's nothing in our system that has kinetic energy. And so we don't put any bars of energy. Next is gravitational potential energy. Well, in order to find out if something has gravitational potential energy, re remember, we need to define some height of zero. And we typically define the lowest point in a particular situation as a height of zero. So let's just define this bottom horizontal track as a height of zero. Remember, if something's at a height of zero, it has no gravitational potential energy. So at position A, the car has no gravitational potential energy, the spring has no gravitational potential energy, and the earth has no gravitational potential energy at this point, or our system. So there is no gravitational potential energy. Now spring potential energy, our spring does have spring potential energy because it's compressed at this position or at this initial state. Let's go to our final state. Again, we need to ask ourselves these questions. Does the system, the spring, the cart, and the earth have kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, spring potential energy, or thermal energy? Well, at position B, the car is moving, so it's got some amount of kinetic energy. It's above a height of zero. It's not at a height of zero, so it has some gravitational potential energy. When the car is at that point, the spring is relaxed. It's uncompressed, so it no longer has any stored spring potential energy. And because we said there's no friction, 
that means nothing's, or we're assuming there's no effect of friction, that means nothing is going to heat up. And so uh, if nothing heats up, there's no increase in temperature, there's no change in thermal energy. So this is an isolated system, or we're going to say this is an isolated system, something where there's no energy transferred in or energy transferred out. We circled pretty much everything, so we're going to assume there's nothing adding energy to anything in our system, or there's no energy leaving our system. If this is an isolated system, the law of conservation of energy says that the total energy has to stay constant, so that there's no change in energy from beginning to end. If that's the case, that means the initial energy has to equal the final energy. Well, in this situation, the initial energy is the spring potential energy, and the final energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy. So our energy conservation equation for this specific situation is that all the spring potential energy in the beginning is equal to the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy in the end. Let's now go back and finish our energy bar chart showing the energy conservation. So in the beginning we can see that there is only spring potential energy so let's put four bars of spring potential energy. We could have put three bars, we could have put two bars it doesn't really matter we just have some amount of initial energy. The thing that does matter though is making sure that the energy we have in the end is the same as the energy we have in the beginning because the law of conservation of energy states that there can't be any change in energy within an isolated system if there's no energy coming into our system or no energy leaving our system. So if we put down four bars of energy in the beginning the sum of the energy in the end or in this case at position B has to be four. So let's just put two bars in kinetic, two bars in gravitational potential energy. It also would have been perfectly acceptable but one in kinetic and three in gravitational potential energy or vice versa one in gravitational potential energy and two in kinetic. Let's now do this same situation again but let's assume for this case now that uh, friction is significant. So we're still going to define our system as the spring, the cart, and the earth. And so we're going to circle our entire system and we'll assume that is an isolated system again so there's no additional energy coming in or out. So we're going to write the spring plus the cart plus the earth. And let's look now again here. Even with uh, friction being present, we have to assume that the total energy is constant within our system so there's not going to be any change in energy. So let's just see how, how the fact that there's friction now where we assume that it's significant uh, plays a part. So we know still that there is no kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy in position A. There's only spring potential energy. In the final state, there's still kinetic energy because the car is moving at position B. The car and the Earth combined have gravitational potential energy because the car is separated from the Earth, or separated from a height of zero there is no more spring potential energy because the spring is no longer compressed it's in its relaxed state but with friction there is going to be some thermal energy because friction causes an increase in temperature between two surfaces that collide or are rubbing against one another which is evidence of an increase in thermal energy so there has to be some uh, greater amount of thermal energy in our system so let's see what this looks like with our energy conservation equation, now we have that the spring potential energy in the beginning has to be equal to the sum of not just kinetic and gravitational potential energy, but also thermal energy. So let's see how that, that looks in our bar graph. If all of our initial energy is spring potential energy, let's put four bars again there. And if we look at position B, it's still at the same height whether there's friction or not, if it makes it all the way up top there. Um, so there still has to be two bars of gravitational potential energy. And remember, we assume that friction is significant, so there has to be some amount of thermal energy, so we'll put one bar there. And we know that it's moving, but if there's friction, it's going to be moving a little less fast than 
in our previous example, and so it kind of makes sense that there would be less kinetic energy or one bar of kinetic energy.